Welcome back to the Student Hub Live. In this session, we're going to talk about exploring the relationship with your tutor. Probably most, one of the most useful contacts you will have this year within your open university journey. Georgina Blakely, thank you for coming along. Now, you were the chair of um, DD102 introducing the social sciences, and you're now going off into different areas. But one thing that's always been very dear to your heart is the relationship between students and tutors. Why does it matter so much? Because, as you say, the relationship with you, have, you have with your tutor is absolutely key to your success and progress with the Open University. So can students do well then and never speak to their tutor? They can, but I would advise most students that at some point in your journey, you'll need somebody to talk to. And I think it's really important to remember that the, your tutor is there first and foremost to teach you. I think we forget that tutors are actually teachers and they'll teach you in various ways. The first thing they'll do is to help you to use the module materials and to kind of find your way through the module websites and basically how to study. But the second key thing, and I know you've talked about this already, is that they'll teach you through the feedback they provide on your assessment. And that's absolutely fundamental to your progress and how you improve as you go through on your student journey. I'd like to pick up on that, but before I do, um, we've got three widgets that we'd like you to vote on. Um, so they're all word clouds, and what that means is there are three options. Now, your results won't submit unless you put something in each box. So if there's only one or two, just put a full stop and submit those results, and you'll also then see what other people have put in the chat. We'd like to know what areas you'd like to ask your tutor but haven't, um, what most concerns you about contacting your tutor, if anything, and that may be if you're a new or a current student, and what is the best piece of advice you have ever got from a tutor? Now, the challenge there is to put that in one word. So you might want to expand on that in the chat box as you're going through as well. Georgina, Peter and I were just talking about assessment and, and we were talking about the tutor marked assignment and, and the importance of understanding the feedback that you've had from your tutor. Now, sometimes best will in the world, and that this happens to me as well, I think I've been very, very clear about something, but a student will pick that up and not understand what I've been talking about. And what's most upsetting is when they don't get in touch and, and clarify it because I've spent time marking it and I'd like them to, to be able to take advantage of my, my thoughts on the matter. But sometimes it's not clear. What, what should students do then in terms of how to seek clarification about things? I think students sometimes feel guilty about cont contacting their tutor. They think, oh, I'm bothering them or I'm going to be a nuisance. But you have to remember that's what your tutor's there for. Yeah, so see your tutor very much as a resource, as somebody you can email or telephone to ask for support. And when you get your feedback, I mean, obviously, we're all human, so the first thing you do is look at the mark. Yeah. And when you've recovered from that, you might be really pleased, you might be a bit disappointed, you might be a bit miffed that it's not as much as you thought, but then take the feedback, because that's the bit that really matters. The mark, in a sense, isn't as important, which I know sounds strange to students, but it's true, because it's the feedback which you should really see as part of teaching and learning. So you need to take that feedback, have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, maybe something stronger, sit down and read it, take notes, and then if you think, well, I'm not sure what they mean by you need to improve your structure or your paragraphing's not very clear, whatever it might be, write that down, put it in an email and send it to your tutor. And your tutor will then kind of think, OK, this is something I can respond to in an email, or they might think, actually, it would be better to have a discussion. Yeah. Or they might say, well, a lot of people said that. They're struggling with the same thing. Yeah. So we'll cover it in the next tutorial. Yeah. But the important thing to remember is that, you know, you really must feel that you can ask your tutor these questions because yeah. that's what they're there for. No, absolutely. Meg, John and I were talking earlier today about caring for yourself in your studies and, and getting this TMA feedback, thinking about that and thinking about how to most usefully apply some of this. And we were talking about the positives and the negatives. And often tutors will feedback positive comments as well absolutely. as negatives. But Meg, John and I were talking about some of this sort of self-serving bias where we, we focus more on the criticisms <laughs> and we think, well, I must do that better. And as you say, sometimes things may be not clear, like you need to expand on them. And then students can think, well, I've used the word count, how can mm. I expand on this? How might they then deal with some of those things that are more about what they're doing as opposed to what they're including? About what they're doing. Can you say a bit more yeah, about what you mean so by that? Sometimes people, a tutor might say you need to expand on this or you've described this in too much detail, you need to mm -hmm. um, evaluate more. And students might think, I don't know what you mean by evaluate more because I think I've okay. done that. So when, when there's yeah. maybe, it's clearly explained, but students don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. 
I think they need to ask for examples um, because sometimes it's actually very difficult to explain something like that without your tutor providing an example. Um, and it might be that the tutor can provide an example that they can put on the forum that other students can also use as well. Uh, and I think the thing is to keep asking. You know, if you get an example and you think, I'm still not sure, so can you explain a little bit more? And to look at sample answers, they're sometimes available as well. And some tutors will give you kind of model answers or sort of pass um, essays for you to look at. Sometimes it's also good as well for your tutor to give you an essay that doesn't quite work so well. Yeah. And you can look at that and see how that can be improved. Yeah. I think it's sometimes helpful to take the personal element out of it. Because I think when we get sort of feedback on our work, particularly where we focus on what needs to be improved, it's easy to take that personally and to think it's a criticism about you. Yeah. And of course it's not. It's, a, it's feedback on how you can improve your work and get yeah. better. And, and part of being an academic is having feedback. I mean, you're writing oh, books, peer-reviewed papers, all of these yeah. things. You're constantly getting feedback and it, yeah. it's part of the whole process, isn't it? If it's any consolation, I can say quite honestly that I've had feedback on a, an article that I've submitted to a journal that's had me in tears and I've not been able to look at it for at least sort of two or three weeks but then I think okay you know I've got past the disappointment I'll get the feedback out and I'll look at it and then you can start to engage with it much more um, constructively and think okay well maybe they do have a point and I'll, I'll try and do this and I'll try and do that. Yeah but there's lots of feedback I mean Peter was saying that some tutors will spend 45 minutes an hour giving very detailed mm. feedback so for students, they might think, well, I've got an idea of this, this and this. There are two forms of uh, information they'll get. There's the, the summary and then there's the detailed yeah. script comments. How would you advise students work with their tutor to maybe prioritise some things that they need to work on, bearing in mind that there will be a, quite a comprehensive coverage of areas to improve and, and we wouldn't expect them to improve on everything? How might they have an individual plan and think, well, my tutor thinks I really need to focus on this or this? And, and how might they then go about exploring that in the relationship? Yeah, I think it can be very daunting sometimes when you do get the feedback um, returned because it can seem like such a huge amount to deal with. Some tutors, I think, what they do with that is say, OK, you know, I'm going to give you feedback on all this because that's my job and so you might get a, a lot of very detailed feedback. But some tutors will also say, OK, I know there's a lot of feedback here, but next time concentrate on one, two and three. Yeah. Yeah, that helps. If your tutor hasn't done that, you can ask them and say, look, I really appreciate all the feedback you've given, but I'm struggling with all the... I can't possibly put everything right at once. Yes, um, yes. So could you advise me for the next TMA, shall I concentrate on this or this or perhaps these two or three things? Because it's very hard, I think, to work on everything, particularly if you're starting out. You know, it might be referencing, it might be your introduction, it might be conclusion. And, you know, be realistic. You know, you're not going to fix everything all at once. That's why we always tell students it's a journey. You know, take it every step at a time. And you're right not suddenly going to be brilliant. And module, people will still be getting a lot of <laughs> feedback <laughs> because there are different things. As yeah. you start improving on something, other things come to light. Absolutely. And so it's a journey, isn't it? Yeah. The other thing that, that I'd like to sort of link between your session and Peter's is the idea of assessment. And you mentioned the importance of looking at grades, but also there's this idea that assessment is staged. So things will get progressively harder. Mm. And assessments also have different areas that they're focusing on. But for some students, they can think they're doing better if they're getting you know, higher grades, yeah. if they're getting feedback of a certain kind. How can they make sense of that? I think it's very important to reflect on your own progress and particularly not worry about what other students are doing yeah, because what you're always doing is measuring yourself against what you want to achieve and for each student that will be very different and also measuring yourself against your own progress yeah, so I would say to a lot of students particularly if you think oh I'm a bit lacking in confidence I'm not sure avoid Facebook yeah, it's really not helpful to get the impression that everybody's getting 80s and 90s and you're maybe getting 30s and 40s. Partly because that's not the reality. A lot of people don't say what it is they're getting. And also it's not helpful. You know, you're comparing yourself against your own progress. So I think that's really important to keep that in mind. And be, be realistic about what you want to achieve. Excellent, thank you. So aside from the TMA then, you mentioned before that your tutor is your sort of individual person that's helping you with your learning and they're, they're your teacher in a sense, so they're teaching yeah. you things. Now we've been talking a little bit about how people might make contact with their tutor and some of our students are just starting out, a lot are at level one. Um, some may have been studying and may not have been making the most of the relationship with their tutor. So for those of those who are just starting out now, 
should their tutor have contacted them and what if they haven't yet? How could they maybe go about making contact? What would your advice be in terms of when to do it and what to say? Yeah. It will vary and that's partly to do with when your tutor gets allocated the names of their student group and sometimes there's a glitch in the system and you get to know before your tutor gets to know. But that's not really a problem. I would wait until the start of the module and by then your tutor should have contacted you and in that letter or email they will say to you, What's the best way to contact them? Sometimes some tutors prefer email, it's easier for them. Others prefer a phone call. And they'll also tell you what times are best um, to contact them. I think it's important to remember that a lot of our tutors work part-time for the Open University. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be there 24 seven for you. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to bear that in mind and, and respect the kind of the guidelines and expectations they set out. If, however, you haven't heard from your tutor and you have their email and details, by all means, you know, drop them an email and say, hello, I'm on your module, I'm looking forward to hearing from you, and they will reply. But as I say, don't be offended if you don't get an immediate reply. I think emails kind of created false expectations. We expect a person to be sitting there and just ping off an email as soon as it arrives. But actually, you know, they may have children, so they may be getting somebody's tea, they may be working somewhere else, you know. I think it's good to remember that tutors have been open university students in many cases, and like our Open University students, they have busy lives as well. So a bit of kind of give and take in terms of response times and, and things like that is always helpful. Now you mentioned email, but um, some tutors give out their mobile phone numbers mm -hmm. and so some students may text them or WhatsApp them or um, yeah. message them. And so there are various ways and, and you know, within those you talk about this like, expectation of response. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I get a WhatsApp message from a student, they'll know that I've seen it, but I might be cooking tea at the time and I might <laughs> not be able to, and then I might forget because I'm always working on email so what my students do then in terms of, of contact so say I miss the whatsapp message and I don't get back to my poor student what might they best do then in terms of, of, of connecting and things oh I, th I think it's absolutely fine if you haven't had a response and particularly if it's something that you're very worried about and would welcome a response is to simply either kind of email again or text again and say I'm really sorry to yeah. bother you yeah. um, you might be busy and that's fine but could you just let me know that you've received the email yes. and that you will get back to me and I think most tutors are, are okay with that. Yeah, no, absolutely. So there are a range of contacting uh, ways of contacting your tutor early doors. What if you haven't done that already? So what if you've started a module in September, October, and you've been working through it diligently sending off your TMAs, but you haven't really maybe had a chat with your tutor? Maybe you've missed their phone call early on, or, or they haven't phoned you, or you haven't just managed to go to a tutorial. Is there still a chance to connect? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and your tutor will be trying, I'm sure, to connect with you, whether that's through the forums or whether that's through personal means, through email or text or whatever. Um, and some students are very self-sufficient yeah. and they choose to work independently and, and don't want to be part of that sort of wider community. And that's fine because everybody has their own kind of needs and interests. Yeah. But I think... If you really kind of do need that support, I think it's very helpful to contact your tutor. And it's never too late yeah. because your tutor, it might sound strange, but they do actually want to hear yeah. with you, yeah. um, hear from you. I know as a tutor, I welcome just a, a one-line email from yeah. students saying, I know I haven't been in touch, but actually I'm fine, I'm doing okay, yeah. and that's great. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. absolutely super. It doesn't have to be a kind of constant stream of communication. Yeah. It's just part of knowing what's going on and keeping your tutor informed, I think, is really helpful. Also, the assessment can get progressively more and more difficult. So often at this sort of midpoint in a module, things can suddenly start to feel a little bit more difficult. Yeah. And that may be when you might really appreciate a word from your mm. tutor if you haven't had that time already. Absolutely. I mean, tutors are very experienced. And as I say, a lot of them have been OU students themselves. So they know what it's like. Even if they haven't, they know the modules very well. So they know when the pinch points are in the module yeah. and when students are likely to start to experience the, the assessment is more challenging or suddenly there's a lot more study materials to navigate. So they're very good, I think, at being able to kind of help students through that should they need that help. Now, I was thinking the other day, um, I had some emails from some students um, talking about things that I think they didn't want to talk about. So they'd <laughs> email me saying, I'm struggling on this. And I think, well, why are you, what are you struggling about? And I was thinking about why they might be speaking to me. And I realised that actually they had something more difficult that they wanted <laughs> to talk about. And so we were initiating an email conversation so that they knew I was replying. And then we could, we could talk about what the matter actually was, much like we do when we're saying, <laughs> how are you? And, and isn't it lovely weather? And actually, I'm finding this really difficult. So in terms of students expressing their needs and what their tutor can give them, 
you know, being British, sometimes it can be difficult to say, I really um, have not an idea about what's going on. I'm way behind. I've missed out on all of this. Um, and sometimes equally, I know when I'm receiving those, it can be difficult to point people in the right direction. So there's a balance yeah. here about, I guess, naming what our needs are and also giving our tutor enough clarity in terms of how they can actually help address some of those things. What might students do if they're feeling like they're falling behind and they might need a tutor to sort of help point them in the right direction, spend five minutes with them prioritising? How might they deal with that situation? Yeah, I think it's really hard because if you are experiencing difficulties, whatever they might be, whether it's with your study or in your personal life or family life or work environment or whatever, I think the longer you leave it in terms of getting in touch with your tutor, the harder it becomes. Um, so I think the sooner you can tell your tutor that you're beginning to feel difficulties about something in some area, it's better to let them know. You don't always have to go into details. You know, you might not want to kind of give them details of your work situation, your family situation or whatever. That's absolutely fine. But I think they need to know that you are experiencing challenges, whatever they might be. If you want to talk about it, that's fine. Um, but they do need to know because they do need to so start to talk to you about how to manage your study in the way that's best for you. So really keeping them informed as soon as possible is absolutely key but also remember that you don't just have to talk to your tutor I think that's important mm. too um, your tutor is always there if you need them but there is the student support team as well and you might feel happier depending on the issue about talking to someone who's not in the end of the day assessing your work and that's fine too because the student support team will tell your tutor that you've contacted them which is great but they won't necessarily need to tell them the details yeah okay. so there's that kind of level of uh, confidentiality and anonymity kind of um, kept within that relationship. Lorraine Gregory and I did a session um, yesterday, which you can watch on Catch Up if you missed, about when to contact the student, uh, tutor and when right. to contact the student support team, mm. which was really useful. And what we, we realised was that sometimes students might just want to ping off an email to a tutor and the tutor might refer them on and there was nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. I mean, tutors tend not to be trained counsellors, for example. They're not career advisors. Um, they won't know every answer to every question that you pose but they can kind of point you in the right direction and if they can't they can say well okay you know contact the student support team because they will be able to help you so yeah it's about knowing the different sources of support that you can draw on thank you Georgina I'd like to look at the widget which is um what is the best piece of advice you've ever got from a tutor um and I know that we don't have a huge amount of time in the session um today and then I'll take a quick trip to the hot desk as well to see um what's been going on there so let's see what you think the best piece of advice you have ever got from a tutor is don't do too much learn from feedback engage in forum analyze more evaluating more great and well done those are some really <laughs> really wonderful kind things yeah. and i hope people have really appreciated themselves for, for what they've managed to achieve in doing some of those quite complex tasks absolutely that's all really good advice <laughs> lovely thank you hj and uh oh sophie sophie that oh, doesn't no. look like you <laughs> 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 We've got uh, John Pullen tonight where we're going to be putting uh, all your questions to her in the Q&A session. So I hope you've been collating all the things that people would like to ask because we don't have time for all that now. But generally, I know there's been a lot of chat going on. So what's it been all about? Um, so, yeah, it's just been all really good. Some nice chit chat going on. Um, nice to see that everyone kind of has, has helpful tutors. So Stuart says that he always gets great tutors, very helpful. Um, they give him good feedback and where to brush up on, which is really nice. Um, the same with Sylvia. And again, it's just nice to see that the tutors are there to help um, the students succeed, basically. So there's a good relationship that happens with between the tutors and the students. We've been having a bit of chat about um, going to tutorials as well and how much we enjoy the chance to see your tutors face to face or uh, the online tutorials as well. We've got some regulars for online tutorials. But um, I think people appreciate that it's not just one way you get into contact with the tutor and it's not very strict. They like emails and some of them. Uh, don't mind telephone calls and you can see them at tutorials and yeah I think tutorials are definitely one to go for yeah all very <laughs> positive mm. wonderful Georgina what's your final word on making the most of your tutor I think it's probably seeing it as a relationship like any other and that means kind of respecting each other it means setting out kind of clear guidelines about what to expect from each other and clear boundaries as well and treating each other as you would in any kind of relationship 
Excellent. Thank you so much for that session. That's been really, really wonderful and really nice to see a tutor. So I hope that uh, if you haven't met your tutor, you, you appreciate that they're a really lovely bunch of people who are really keen to help you. So do ask, do get in touch and, and do develop and make the most of that relationship. We're going to have a very short video now about Achilles and the tortoise. And then we're going to come back um, for our final session uh, this afternoon with Maria Ledham to talk about um, what's where and how do social workers write. That'll be a really interesting session. And we'll save all of your questions for John Call this evening, who's coming to do a Q&A session about your tutor. If you have got a particularly lovely tutor, and I'll dig this out a little bit later, there is actually um, an award you can enter them for, which is from the um, Open University Students Association. So I'll dig those out so uh, you can nominate your tutor for that and, and surprise them, which would be lovely. We'll see you in five minutes. Grab a cup of tea and I'll be back then.